Hi everyone, I'm here again uh, with Dr. Nario. We do an interview once a week, so thanks for being with us, Dr. Nario. Hi Steve, thank you for having me again. Always a pleasure. We're going to talk about coffee. <clears throat> um, this is a fascinating topic that you've given me. I've got lots of questions. And first, if you guys want to know more about Dr. Nario, he's with Biointegrative Health Center in Reno, Nevada. You can check them out online, Biointegrative Health Center, easy to find, and you can find out more about what they do. <clears throat> so we're going to talk about this coffee gene. What is it? So, uh, Steve, the caffeine gene is commonly... Oh, oh, sorry. Yeah, it's a caffeine gene. So yeah, well, you, yeah, you told me specifically, caffeine. it's not... it Because uh, there's caffeine... Mm -hmm. It's a caffeine gene because there's caffeine in a lot more things than coffee, right? Right. That's right. That's right. Okay. So, so we want to make sure that people know this isn't just about coffee, right? Yep. That is correct. That is correct. Okay. Caffeine gene. Caffeine gene. <laughs> so, okay. What is this? Right. So the caffeine gene, Steve, is, again, in medical terms, it's the genetic variation of the CYP1A2 gene which is responsible for the 95% of almost every metabolism part of the of caffeine. So you know, let's keep it as caffeine gene rather than coffee or the CYP1A2, right? And it encodes the enzyme involving um, the metabolism that actually comes from the liver. So the liver is the one that breaks down um, caffeine for you and affecting um, the sensitivity and tolerance of, of a person. So when, when you have this, um, I guess, abnormality, you have two classifications of the abnormality. It's either a fast or a slow metabolizer. And then that's why it's something that's very important for us because uh, when you define these, if you are either one of them, it's, it's, it might be you not having any effects um, when you drink coffee, meaning bad effects, or you're actually putting um, yourself in a huge stress rather than getting the, the benefits of drinking coffee. And I know there is benefit of caffeine um, yeah, of <clears throat> and coffee. So um, how many people have this? Do, you, do we know? Do we have an idea how common this caffeine gene is? Right. Uh, well, Steve, just to get you back to, of course, just reminding our audience how beneficial coffee can be in in moderate dosing. Okay. And the, this is actually known to actually enhance cognitive function, alertness, uh, lower down the risk of neurodegenerative diseases, even lowers down type 2 diabetes and certain types of cancer and also improving heart health, right, in moderation. Uh, the thing here is to answer your question, uh, so the one that we need to keep an eye out for would be the slow metabolizers of, of caffeine. This is approximately 50% of European population, meaning Americans um, are actually are mixed race and there's always a European gene in there and carries this, what we call allele or defect. And it's mm, com less common in the other, uh, I guess, races. But the thing there why it's not uh, common yet because of the studies not being conducted on the specific populations. And slow metabolizers, of, of course, as I mentioned, are higher risk for hypertension, my, uh, I guess, heart attacks, consume, consuming large amounts of caffeine yeah. due pro to prolonged exposure um, to, to coffee. And then coffee is just like out there. And the, the, uh, the slow metabolism leads to prolonged exposure again, uh, which actually sustains stimulant effects to the cardiovascular system. So that's why this is very important because it's, I mean, I, I can even give you the statistics of how prominent coffee in, in the United States is. Yeah, you know, you said, um, clarify for me and for our listeners, what do you mean by slow metabolism when you're talking about caffeine? It's people that metabolize caffeine slowly, or what do you mean by slow me metabolism? Meaning it stays longer in their body. <clears throat> so when it stays longer, meaning you're getting... Uh, I guess uh, more effects. It's like you drunk, you drank one uh, cup, right? If it stays longer in your system, it's like you're drink, uh, you're drinking in two, three cups as an equivalent to that. 
And, and of course, where my concern would be as a medical doctor would be the significant affectation in the cardiovascular system for the reason that it affects blood pressure um, shortly after consumption. Typically, within 30 to 60 minutes, you will see this um, effect, and also it would last for hours. And the slow metabolizers, you see it, it can last up to eight hours um, uh, or, or more, depending on the amount of coffee consumed um, per individual and their sensitivities. And as you would know, one cup of coffee is not what everybody takes in. It's probably more than that. And also when you talk about how does it affect the blood pressure, it can increase your blood pressure like five to 15 uh, points um, for your systolic and five to 10 points from your diastolic. And this is again, wow. just moderate coffee. Um, <clears throat> in, and this is almost like 200 milligrams equivalent uh, to about two cups of coffee. And this is very important for the ones who are already high and you add more to, to that blood pressure, like 180 guy now goes into a 200 level. Uh, so that's why this is something that's of, of, of importance because nobody knows about this gene and they're thinking, hey, how come I'm, 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 I'm drinking all these drugs, all these medications, and it's not controlling my blood pressure. And for all you know, I have patients who I just remove coffee from it and their blood pressure is normalized. That is amazing. So if your blood pressure goes up, 20 minutes, 30 minutes after drinking a cup of coffee, that, correct me if I'm wrong, but what I hear you saying is that's an indicator that you might be a slow metabolizer and have this um, caffeine gene. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, uh, that's one of them. But the thing here is there are also other signs and symptoms that you can watch out for. So I don't know if you have friends that when they take coffee, they feel, man, I'm getting palpitations. I'm jittery. Uh, I'm just um, so hyped up. And there are other people who actually, oh, I'm going to drink coffee before I go to bed because uh, I don't feel anything. It even makes me go to sleep. So those are the slower metabolizers. I'm sorry, the faster metabolizers, the one who drinks coffee at night. And and the faster uh, and the slow metabolizer are the ones who just gets all like sh uh, shaken up. So blood pressure is one of them. The thing here is, though, is the mechanism of action in this situation would be it's because um, caffeine actually stimulates your adrenaline to be produced. So all of these symptoms that I just mentioned to you are actually effects of adrenaline in your system. And of course, when you have adrenaline, you now have higher cortisol levels as well. So as you can see, this is not just a blood pressure uh, discussion here. This is a very systemic issue that even circulation can be affected. If you have, for example, circulation issues on the legs and you're always the one who jumps out of bed because you have pain and you need to shake it off, that can also be aggravated by, uh, by caffeine because of the adrenaline being produced. So again, and not just that one symptom of blood pressure, there are so many systemic symptoms that you can see along with slow <laughs> metabolizers. Well, yeah, I'm one of those people that can have a cup of coffee and just go right to bed and fall right asleep. Right. Um, makes my wife so mad. <laughs> um, but um, you, you said you, you gave me a statistic mm -hmm. that you must have looked up about how many people drink coffee. Right. <clears throat> what was that? So so I'll give you some statistics here on how important this is for every American to find out what their gene is, uh, if they do have it or not, is because. So I mentioned to you, 50% of almost uh, every American out there has this g defective gene, right? Coffee drinkers, uh, American adults, as, as according to the study, consumes coffee daily. And this is 64% of the population. So as you can see, 64% and it, almost a flip of a coin, everybody has this, this defective gene. You're basically almost affecting everybody who has this gene, right? So uh, the, 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 it's just that the consumption is too much. And on average, Americans drink like three cups of coffee per day. And 29% uh, of coffee drinkers consumes more. So meaning <clears throat> three is the average, but there are more people out there drinking more than that. And majority of the coffee drinkers uh, in the U.S. would be like 70 to 70% 70 would be age 60 and older. 
and um, the, of course, the other half, the other of that percent would be the 18 to 24. So imagine 60 and older, you already have ongoing cardiovascular problems. These are the people who already has heart issues just because of getting older. And now you add this on top of that, then everything gets so complicated for you to be led towards heart attacks and stroke risks. And again, men tend to drink more than women in relation to, to coffee. And you have to understand this, that Starbucks, okay, I, I, I mentioned them, consistently generates the highest revenue in the coffee shop industry in the U.S., which is present in almost every corner of wherever we go. So that's why it's, it's very important to understand this because I, I myself, to be honest with you, I have this gene. So I'm not European at all. But now I actually um, am not drinking coffee or I mean, I try to avoid it as much as I can just because of my family history of strokes, heart attacks, and even high blood pressure. Okay, so here's my next obvious question. You said you have this gene. Mm -hmm. How did you know? Um, and how do people know? Well, first, let me just say that's an interesting statistic. 64% roughly uh, drink coffee. Half of them have this gene. That's 32% of adults are being affected by this right? because 64% drink coffee, cut it in half. I don't know. Maybe my math's wrong, but that's interesting. So how did you know, and how does, how does our average listener know if they want to find out if they have this caffeine gene? So one of the things that uh, I would advise, because this test is something that you need to go to your doctor for, and they can actually um, um, ask for this test. I, I go through a specialty lab. I mean, my lab court in Quest, uh, I don't think they do it, but uh, if I, you go to an integrative doctor, they probably can test for this gene. But one thing that I could always kind of use as a screening tool are the symptoms that I just mentioned a while ago. If you're the one who takes coffee, then boom, 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 boom. Uh, blood pressure is up, you're just hyper. Okay, you probably need to get checked. If you're not the calm, cool cap after a coffee, uh, you're probably the one who needs to get screened. So um, there's an easy way. And there's a more complicated way by seeing your doctor. Wow. Okay. Well, that is great information, probably valuable information to a lot of people out there listening. So was there any last thing that you would add, maybe something that I didn't ask that's important for our listeners to know? Right. So one thing that, again, now the question arises when I talk to my patients about this is, so what is the right coffee consumption? I mean, for somebody who can actually take it, right? So for healthy adults, FDA actually cited that about four to five cups of coffee um, is, is an amount not generally associated with dangerous effects. Um, however, so this is what they mentioned, uh, bo um, there is a wide variation in both how sensitive people are and the effects of caffeine and how fast they metabolize it or break it down. So even FDA recognizes this. It's just they just didn't mention specifically what um, what to look out for. But as a disclaimer to their suggestion of four to five cups, hey, you have to know if you're going to be having these specific symptoms or if you have this specific gene. So it's not only something that I know about. It's it's getting uh, I guess spread out or the awareness is starting to happen and. Now, as I educate everybody here, you need to get checked, especially if you're a coffee drinker, because I was before, and I could not, of course, debate the fact that coffee has actually good benefits for the body. But if it's actually going to bring get you closer to that brink of a heart attack or a stroke, maybe not worth it. Maybe you should get a chamomile tea. Maybe you should get um, just a peppermint tea to start your day. So other alternatives are out there. So here's the thing, though. The, the rule here is um, you always want to make sure if you have high blood pressure, uh, that this is something that I always tell patients that you need to check this. And especially if you're a coffee drinker plus high blood pressure, just because you don't want to, you don't want to uh, see in the end that, oh my God, I could have prevented all of these problems by just stopping coffee. Wow. That is a great topic, doctor, and great advice. Oh, Steve, um, one more thing. You're right. Yeah. You have to emphasize that when I'm talking about, we're harping about coffee here. We have to remind our audience that it's caffeine. So caffeine is present in green tea, sports drinks, 
and even um, um, I think they're selling this in tablets now, for migraine medicine. So don't be, uh, I guess, blurred by just looking out for coffee. Anything that has caffeine in it can cause this. I guess you could drink decaf, right? But there's probably oh, sure. some negative effect. There's probably some negative things about drinking decaffeinated coffee too. Right? Yeah, that's another whole discussion right there. So <clears throat> organic, right. right? Chemicals used to decaffeinate. So that's another whole, uh, I guess, session for us. That's true. Uh, maybe we do one on the dangers of decaffeinated coffee. Right. Okay. Well, doctor, thanks as always for your input. We appreciate it. Thanks for being here. Well, thank you, Steve, for having me again. As we all know that our knowledge is your power to better health. And thank you for letting me provide you with engine longevity and health maintenance, which I call the biological edge or the bio edge.